This is a HeadGum Podcast. Dear God, please watch over my new podcast. We're just starting out, and I need all the help I can get. Dear God, please fill us with your light and your good quality audio. Please bless us with good Christian subscribers. People who open the Bible and press subscribe and leave a good review. Dear God, I know I haven't always f- followed your word to the letter, but by golly, I'm asking you here today to lift me up and let me into the top 100 comedy podcasts on Apple. And dear God, I know I've listened to other podcasts in the past and they've asked me to rate and subscribe and I've laughed a full hour and then I did not go and rate and subscribe. Forgive me for my trespasses of not reviewing Forgive me for my trespasses of not understanding the engineering work that goes into creating a podcast that has high quality audio. Please bless our microphones. Please bless Stephen's 2014 MacBook Pro. And dear God, please bless this audience. Amen. Who's that knocking at the door? It's all your friends, you filthy whore. Your husband's gone, and we've got books and a bottle of wine to kill. It's Hollywood. It's books. It's gossip. I'm shook. It's memoirs. It's martinis. It's Studio 54. It's It's Celebrity Book Club. Come read it while it's hot. Celebrity Book Club. Tell your secrets, we won't talk. Celebrity Book Club. No boys are allowed. Celebrity Book Club. Club. Buzz me in, I brought the Cuervo. Hey, best friend. Hey, best friend. I am so excited to see you, my good Christian sister. Mm, Stephen, we have spent so much time at church, at church groups, mm-hmm. at, on missionary trips. It's so good to get in the studio with you and talk about our life in the ministry. Uh, that's why I built this home recording studio, <laughs> so that we could do things like podcast about God, about values. I was wondering if we could talk about Jessica Simpson's new book, newish to old book, open book for oh. a little bit, maybe say an hour to an hour and a half, 45 to 55 minutes. I would love to. That would be a huge Thank honor. You. Yeah, that's so awesome. I've been looking to collaborate with someone from New York City. Oh, my God, that'd be so fun. I want to talk about the book that we have read absolutely cover to cover. Cover to cover. I, you know, this was really a savior to me during, I would say, early quarantine. Oh, wow. Because you were just like, I'm depressed. I am isolated. And we just read this book and it was such a joy. It was a page turner, you know? Yeah. I would say like the the sort of like when she's famous, she's Jane John Mayer, like that, that was, re- I was like up till 5 a.m. Like just. Whoosh, whoosh, this is, whoosh. this is book you stay up for. This is book you would rather read personally for me rather than maybe watch a TV show. It's a little slow going at first because you're just like, okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Well. We may disagree. We may disagree. So, yeah, just just to quickly uh, sort of situate our listeners, uh, the book is called Open Book. The photo, the cover photo is in black and white, which, as we know, indicates raw. Raw, vulnerable, honesty. I'm ready to come clean, to quote her sister, Ashley Simpson. Oh, wait. No, that's... Um, wow, that's Hillary, Hillary Duff. Duff. Okay. Awkward. And your misogyny is showing. <laughs> this book, for our listeners, namely Austin Powers, if you are frozen, <laughs> um, Jessica Simpson is like a huge pop star and fashion designer and Christian woman and wife. And sports fan. Licensor. And a huge player in the <laughs> licensing community. I think she has like Guinness Book of World Records, like... F- Women entrepreneur who has like licensed more pieces of clothing and jewelry and perfume than anyone else. She got in on the license ga- licensing game at really the right time. Uh, like, honey, I <laughs> wish I got into the licensing game when she did. But you know, mid two thousands, early two thousands, she kind of said she could see the writing on the wall about the music career, and she was just like. I've obviously got something. I've got this connection. People, and people right? love me. Like, they loved her on Newlyweds. And, like, clearly they bought her albums, which are all, like, horrible. And, you know, she had something to her. Yeah. But, yeah, was it music? No. No. It was... A Did she want to expose herself on, you know, reality TV again? Not really. We'll see. I, I okay. Don't, I feel like she would absolutely say yes to a reality TV She would just offer. be like, but this time, here are my boundaries. Right. She would be a little more Christine be... Cavallari about it and be like... Ace and whatever, her children would be like blurred out with their faces. Sailor. 
I'm not talking about Kristen Cavallari. Okay, I was I'm just going to force you to list Kristen Cavallari's Sailor children. James and Ace. Are, do they have both? Do both of them have kids named Ace? I don't know. Jessica think... Simpson's kids are Ace and Birdie May. Right, Birdie May, which is also busy for And Phillips it's something like Ace Kehoe. It's very, like, Hawaiian. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was an important space for her. Yeah. Uh, and Kristen Kevlar's kids are I thought, what, isn't Sailor one of them James. Jackson yeah, with Jack, an X? it's X S O N, like yeah. super anti, like kind of anti vax Jackson. <laughs> <It's> so, <laughs> Jackson is so anti vax. Do you think Jessica Simpson is anti vax? I think she's pro vax. She seems in a Christian, just kind of normal Dallas, take your kids to the doctor way. Super normative Dallas culture, <laughs> which does support vaccinations. I feel like she probably already has the COVID vax. I'm sure. Yeah, she got the Pfizer like sent to her, and her husband and her like had tantric sex while they while gave, gave it to each, each other the Pfizer. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how I want to get my vaccine: tantric vaccine. Tantric vaccine from your six foot eight football player husband? Mm-hmm. Or no? Yeah, football. Yeah. football. Um, Needham, her husband Eric is from Needham, so this is huge for us as a kind of a Boston-based but podcast. He doesn't really scream Needham to me. Well, here's the thing about Needham: who Needham does? doesn't scream. Okay, so it's just like <laughs> you're from Needham. Who cares? <laughs> What's her name? The uh, the gymnast is Needham, but she to me screams Allie, Needham. Allie, the what? one who got molested. Yeah, the brunette. Okay, and. On to Jessica, she too got... <laughs> but here's the thing about... Okay, so obviously, like, every celebrity memoir, there's a dark Starts history of a... sexual his- abuse. abuse. It was jaw a girl. girl. Jaw, not, no spoilers, but I... You know, so in the pages leading up, you're realizing, you're like, okay, and she's talking about the abuse, and you're getting ready, and you're just like, it's going to be so creepy, and it's going to be like Uncle Jackson or whatever, and he's going to be, like, coming to my barn, and it's going to be so dark, and then it's just about... And I'm not saying this is not as bad, but it's about her getting fingered <laughs> by a girl in a waterbed, and you're just kind of like, oh. Hmm. Sounds like you're saying it's your fantasy. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Not a, right. Not yeah. at that age, not not, not No, not absolutely not consensually, not at that age, but, like, you know, as a child, like, when I was, like, 13, I always had, like, a fantasy that any, like, random vacation I would go on, like, to Maine or the Cape or whatever, I would, like, run into, like, a cool local alternative girl and we would hook up. And it's just like, well, that never happened. <laughs> <laughs> so you're picturing yourself at Maine. You're, like, gay dad is just, like, angry looking at a map. <laughs> like, your mom is being like, where are Where, <laughs> where are we? <laughs> where are we? <laughs> and you're thinking some girl in, like, checkered vans. Yep. Is... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, we're going to go to, like, the local gym general store and there's gonna be like a girl in checkered vans like getting a cone or whatever and be and, like hey uh want to come around behind the clamory like i want to show you something yeah that's that's the fans are like hey a few of my friends are like i don't know if you're new here or whatever but like we're gonna go out by like the bay or the dock uh, i mean this did kind of happen to us in nantucket with um what's his name yes we were standing on a path and we saw a group of like true fantasy like this is my other sexual fantasy. Just huge truck of girls like drove by us. And we're just like, party this way, bitches. <laughs> and we followed their party car to an actual party at a house like by the beach. And then we played flip club with white Russians. And this guy there was just like fucking white Russians for all. So um, super epic. I but mean, who, back to, yeah. who, who doesn't love milk and vodka uh, together? So we are drinking right now. Um, Jessica's favorite drink, but also kind of what made her... Yeah, sent her down a dark path. Super dark path, which is Perrier and vodka. She is just a classic vodka girl. And this is where this is why she is Ultimate so sorority. Vodka, because it's just like... sweatshirt girl. Sorority is like sweatshirt, vodka. Small shorts. Small shorts. And it's just like, we've all heard the stories of like the vodka-soaked tampons. And it's just like, clear alcohol has this, some sort of connotation in the minds of just like straight girls at college that it's like better for you. Well, it's like less, less yeah, it's less it's calories. Like, so many empty calories. To, but I think it is less calories than whiskey. Also, like, I feel like that type of girl is so like, whiskey does crazy things. <laughs> right. And they all have this complex about tequila and they're like, uh, tequila's, <laughs> tequila gets me too weird. Right. Like tequila makes you like slutty, but like vodka, you can just like throw in crayon or Gatorade and you don't taste it right. and, and you're, you're just still, covering it up. And you're in control. I mean, Absolutely. and honestly, like that is how it made Jessica feel. So, you know, the book opens up and she's she's filling up one of those big TJ Maxx tumblers that you can take to the gym, put coffee, you know, keep keep this beverage eight hours cold, eight hours hot. And she's filling it with Perrier 
and vodka to go to, like, Ace Kehoe's. To go to her, like, seven-year-old school play or whatever. And she's, like, like squeezing into the backseat. I mean, she sounds so like Jennifer Coolidge in any movie in these scenes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she's... it's, like, delusional, like, full crazy star who's like, well, by that point, everyone just came to me and I had big parties and I never had to leave my house. And now she has to, like, see people. Well, and the big thing is she had to, you know, which is... Her biggest pain is her parents' divorce and her dad being a completely psychotic gay pastor psycho manager. Yeah, which, again, again we see these through lines in all these celebrities. You have to have a psycho parent in there. Mm-hmm. You have to have some someone pushing you past the brink. You have to have someone to be like, oh, I'll drive you toward Orlando and we're going to stand in line for this like audition. And then you're going to cry because like you lost the audition to Christina. And you have to just be like, you're going to see that girl Christina again and you're going to show her. And you're going to beat her. And it's OK. The irony is so she starts to have all of these run ins with like Justin Timberlake and Brittany, Brittany and Christina, like when they're all teens, because like this was this era when the teen starlet was, that- was starting. They all auditioned for Mickey Mouse. And I think, like, Britney and Christina, like, got to a higher level of Mickey Mouse. And Jessica well, I, either, like... Weren't they? They were on Mickey Mouse Club. I think they were all on it. Uh, but Jessica was not. Yeah, she didn't make it, but she got very um, high, high in the, in the auditions. Yeah. yeah. And she... I mean, I think that Jessica has a great voice, but... She did not have the full package. Like, Britney was coming out with all these dance moves. Christina obviously has an insanely huge voice that was just sort of undeniable. Um, That's and, and Jessica was just third. So it's like, you know, when we jump to when she's like auditioning at Sony and, you know, Columbia and all this stuff, every time she walks into a room, they're like, huh, we just signed a girl just like you, but better. Her name is Brittany. Yeah. Huh, we just signed a girl just like you, but like skinnier. Her name is Christina. Yeah. And it's always like they signed her like 20 minutes before she got to the office. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, Being the place at the right time. And then, you know, she does get signed and Tommy Matola signs her famous ex-husband and Mariah Carey. And tells her she needs to lose 15. Yeah. And so it begins. So it begins. The weight loss, you know, the inferiority complex. Mm-hmm. You know, meanwhile, she's, what, 107 pounds? Oh, and she's like a buck, too. I mean... You know, she's she's classic celebrity. She's like 4'11". Yeah. <laughs> she, she would walk in this room and I wouldn't be able to see her. And they just never could, like... She says it, too. She was just like, they just didn't have a genre for me. And I was, like, listening to the albums and it's like, the first one is just like... All these kind of like random sea ballads that you would find on a Mariah it's, Carey it's so album, like track 11. Yeah. I mean, here's the issue, though. It's like when you are, you know, a church singer, it's like you kind of have to go big or go home. And so, like, she didn't have like these power, power ballads. She had these like really mid level sea ballads that were just like kind of Celine Dion clunkers that if you don't have an insane like French Canadian like psycho singing them, like it doesn't really have any personality. Um, what's completely Lee Insane is the way she also got her auditions. Like she had her dad, her crazy gay dad, Joe Simpson, um, had just been having her record like Christian songs and they were on a missionary trip to Belize and just quote from the Belize trip, their bus broke down. And this is where like the book also you started. You're like, oh, okay, this is a full Christian Bible. She's like, the bus broke down. So I had everyone get out of the bus and I led a prayer circle around the bus in Belize where they all gathered around the bus holding hands. And she was like, dear God, let's pray for this bus and like pray for the bus's engine. And she's like, and then a bunch of armed guards came and got us. Anyway, and then it was on that trip that this woman calls her and is like, I want you to meet me in Dallas like now. And the reason is because she heard her non-secular songs. And she was like mad. She was like, Daddy, like, how dare you send them my non-secular songs? <laughs> wait, you mean her secular songs? Yeah, wait. I, okay. Remind me. Se- okay. <laughs> secular means the Christian songs and non-secular are pop songs no. or songs. Other way around? Wait, now I, I'm i actually having an, an insane, like, brain reversal right now where I don't know which or, it Or I actually think secular means pop song no, sec- because— No, secular means, like, a secular country is one that is not, like, a Christian— like, a, not a religious country, right? Right. It's always this whole thing. It's like, is Turkey going to be a secular country? That's the only thing I can think of is Turkey. <laughs> Glad we figured that out. <laughs> okay, so, right. This woman, Tracy, like, got her non-secular songs, and they were so Christian and were— Oh, wait— Okay, I literally just are you maybe forget it again. <laughs> we're gonna move on from secular because uh, don't you feel like you're in kind of a religion PhD right now? Secular, non secular. No, absolutely, I do. Let's like let's like click study. Like, in fact, like Buddhism and Christianity have more in common than you might think. Well, it's true. I just had, as you know, my um uh, exterminator 
the other week. <laughs> the other week, because I yes, I I had a small road problem, not my fault. Just large building, New York City. Um, he told me he was a Catholic Buddhist. What? Yes. Wait, he because this is the one who told you that his daughter was a lesbian cop. Yeah. And he tried to set your girlfriend up with her. <laughs> yes. Or also just tell her to join the force to be amongst other lesbians. Yeah, but I think the implication is was, that. Was, yeah. You know, hey. Maybe you'll find some other than this loser. Who's, <laughs> yeah, this loser who's fucking bra- sitting down over sitting here. Sitting down over here getting roaches in your house because they can't fucking clean the kitchen. <laughs> Find yourself a fucking good cop lesbian. <laughs> um, shout out Donnie. Um, TM me for a ra- I wish we had a coupon code for him. Honestly, hmm. Catholic Buddhist, Catholic Buddhist, which is kind of Jessica. Like, I mean, she's super Christian evangelical, but like her now husband, Eric. Well, they're just like they're L.A. So, yeah, yeah. They're yeah like so they're being so like Zen and Kabbalah and having just like a fountain in their backyard that has like a ball on it. And she's and always like, oh, I woke up and looked out the window and I saw Eric was meditating. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, this is the perfect man. This is the perfect man. After her, you know, were you a big newlyweds watcher? Yeah. I. That was 10 Spot, right? Yeah, that was 10 Spot. And we owned the DVD of it, kind of like in our roommatehood. Right. As as as, as friends. As, as, as good, good, friends. good roommate friends. <sighs> yeah. I mean, newlyweds. Wow. That was an interesting time. Truly was. And so, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's like, right, she's coming out with these albums and then she refers to it as the second album of They Tried Every Genre Under the Sun. Mm-hmm. Also, I'm just imagining you at the Virgin Megastore on Newberry Street in Boston, just where they have like number one album, number two, <sighs> number three, and you're like, I'm going down the line. Yeah, honey. <laughs> and you're just kind of big red shopping basket, like one, <laughs> two, three, four. No, I'm putting on the big yeah. headphones. I'm listening to uh, a couple tracks and saying, Yeah, this is for me. I could see myself jamming out to this in my Iowa 60 changer in my room for sure. Because when she's referencing some of her hits here, I was just like, What? <laughs> well, that's she doesn't have any hits. She has, I would say that. I mean, the, I love the Jack and Diane one. Yeah, the Jack. I think the I'm one in that love samples. It. I think I'm. But in, I think uh, that kind I'm, of became a sleeper hit, like at, way after it came out, because that was her second album, and like I think DJ that's, Physical Therapy actually introduced me to that song. I think that's liked by sort of like millennials mm. in like a cool retro way. Right, like, oh, do you guys remember like five years ago in this like total fucking ridiculous like pop machine? Just well, I don't even out? think people. I think they just like the sample because the samples like the 80s or whatever. And then I listened to that album, A Public Affair. That whole album is like samples of famous 80s songs and that's why it's the best. It's very throwback. Totally. And then I tried to listen to her country album and as oh, you were, I just huge country. To it so it's so bad. bad. Like I'll listen to the most like written by a computer country song that's just like, hey, boots, hey, boots, tequila, boots, <laughs> yeah, boots and tequila, like, boots, boots, t-shirt, boots, <laughs> I'm on a t-shirt in my boots <laughs> in the back of my pickup. Get my pickup. And it's just truly just a list of objects. Yeah, and this was not even that. It was like Sunday jeans or whatever. <laughs> and it's again, it's so slow. The, There's the no slow, bangers. The, the tempo. She has a tempo issue. I'm just like, I, and this is another reason why she could never like, you know, compete in the same arena as Britney and Christina because they were just like, yeah, we're like 16 year old little like dance machines and we're just going to give people some bangers. And I was just like, just like a refu- I feel like in this Christian way, she was like, well, I can't do a banger. Right. I can't, people can't dance to our music. That's sinful. Okay. I want to jump to something completely insane. We'll get super into her relation with Nick, but basically she knows it's over and she gets on a plane. She's like, and there was no Wi-Fi in those days. So I was just stuck with me and my emotions. And of course, they play The Notebook. And she goes, and I really knew the plot of The Notebook because I was offered the role and had read the script and she turned it down because there was a sex scene. Mm. It's like, can one- you imagine if Jessica Simpson had been in The Notebook? <laughs> the no- Versus Rachel McAdams. Like, it would have just been, I guess, so much more walk to remember and, like, wouldn't have been a classic. Yeah. Because it would have just been so fake and, like, what? I mean, I'm trying to... Wait, have you seen her act? Have you seen... What's it called? I... The Johnny Knoxville movie, who she has an emotional affair with for five years. I almost watched Dukes of Hazzard the other night and then I decided to watch Newlyweds, but I have seen her in, like, that Dane Cook movie many years ago, like, Employee of the Month. Yeah. Where she, like, works in a superstore. That's such a (laughs) straight-to-DVD. Yeah. Was it fun? Yeah, I think it was fun. I'm sure I laughed a little. It's, like, fucking hijinks in a Costco. Oh, I'm having a humiliating memory right now of blowing this guy while he watched Superstore. That is absolutely humiliating. But that's also 
what's hot well, about what it. What was cool and hot about it, yeah. So I want to talk about the Johnny Knoxville <laughs> emotional affair. She Ugh. she wor- she works in this movie. So when she's pretty much at the height of her fame, she's like getting movie offers and third season Newlyweds. It's a huge hit. Her and Nick's marriage is in is in every tabloid. It's at the bottom of the barrel. They're fighting so much. They hate the cameras. But she's got all this fame to go along with it, and she gets a role in Dukes of Hazard um, as Daisy Duke. The Daisy Duke. And basically, like the role is, you have to wear those Daisy shorts. Dukes. Which is not um, hard for her. And Johnny Knoxville plays whoever. Also, are we going to talk about Johnny? Johnny? And yeah. your relationship and with my, him? And my relationship, you know. And of course, I think Jessica and Johnny Knoxville have a bigger relationship. So, and I would never want to overshadow it. Right. But Johnny Knoxville was my personal beard um, before I came out. Like, I thought he was literally the coolest motherfucker on the planet. So when people, you know, in middle school, high school say, hey, Lily, who's your, who's your crush? Who's your celebrity crush? I said proudly, Johnny Knoxville. And he was the only person you had a crush on that was still alive. <laughs> yeah, because there's a <laughs> famous memory, <laughs> famous to me, when I was in the basement of, you know, my friend's house. We're having caffeine-free Diet Coke and eating dominoes. And they're like, Lily, who's your crush? Who's your crush? And I was like, James Dean, Frank Sinatra, Clark Gable. Um, <laughs> and I was like, and Johnny, and I, they were like, please name someone and, who's not dead. And they're just like, oh, weird. You're 60. Yeah. <laughs> Who brought the old girl? <laughs> so then I was like, I was like, okay, fuck. This is Rock sounding. my brain yeah, for the living. This is sounding weird. And then I was like, oh, cool punk MTV guy who like, other like old girls do think is hot Johnny Knoxville. So I get it, Jessica. Okay. So they start, you know, they start this emotional affair where he introduces her to McCollin Scotch whiskey. Mm. And they sit at the bar and they talk about their marriages. And they talk about life and semiotics. <laughs> and he introduces her to Johnny Cash. She okay, Jessica does this thing that Terry Hatcher does that I think a lot of girls do, where it's just like any conversation to them is just like really meaningful and it's just like <laughs> she's like we talked for two hours and it's kind of like okay you talk well it's what I feel like you were saying <laughs> to quote you from our last podcast is just how like straight people don't have anything in common so if they do talk for right. two hours then it's literally like like the world's colliding. No, I know the like, Red Sea is party, and they're like, "Holy shit, we like managed to like maintain conversation." For well, two hours. honestly, I'm sure. Like in watching Newlyweds, it's like Jessica and Nick are having the ultimate straight marriage, where they're both she's big sweatshirt, little shorts, he's huge shorts, super tight tank top, visor, and they're just like walking around silently, and he's just like cracking another Miller Light in their massive house, and she's like, are you going to watch the game? We just listened to the game, and then he's turning on like another college basketball game. So to sit down at a bar with Johnny Knoxville, he's piercing. Sorry, mm. I'm getting yeah. <laughs> soaked those, right now. Those dark eyes. And, you know, he's sitting there. He's cracking jokes. He's He said, oh, man, when I was 16 and, and I heard, you know, this Johnny Cash song and they're talking about God and their marriages, he mm-hmm. was having trouble. And she related because she felt so isolated at that point. You know, it was like the whole, everyone wanted everything from her and she just wanted to disappear. Well, it changed also her views on sex because it's, it's also completely... No, I'm sorry, it's so insane that like her whole career was being a virgin. She like became famous for being a virgin, got married, had a whole show about her marriage because everyone was like, "Oh wow, this is the first now time she's ever having had sex. sex." Yeah, we're watching and, like, you. Like- we're like watching someone lose their virginity live, and then just like she was like, "Okay, now I am actually divorced and just having sex regularly, and it's completely normal." It's in their her and Nick's courtship. It's so crazy. You're like they dated for like two years, and there's a point where he's like, "I actually like literally can't hit," and he's like 27, and then she's like, "I knew like it was hard." Hard for Nick. And then he proposes and it's like, and then another seven months? Like if someone literally was like, I can't have sex for you, sex for you, so, <laughs> sex with you for like two years. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think, I think we both know the answer to that question. It's just, it's wild. <laughs> I, I mean, would how long would, would you wait? Hmm. Max. Max, I think a month. Like a month of like. Courting. Courting. So that means like maybe five dates. Yeah. So like maybe you're seeing each other like 
every weekend and like one midweek date. Hmm. Well, I'd also love, she doesn't really say it's like, right, is she being so classic, like Christian girl who's doing like everything but? Is she just giving him so many blowjobs? Yeah, I kind of think yes. If there's no other way, like it could happen. Yeah. Or the classic Catholic girl thing is like, you can anal. do anal. Jinx. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of think there just had to have been anal. And they lived, and she was like, and Nick moved into a condo in my condo building. So we weren't, like, living together. It was almost like living together. And they're, like, in these insane Hollywood condos next to each other that are just so carpeted. Honestly, I kind of love that. Like, the idea of having that sort of independence um, and yet convenience. Absolutely. Yeah, just pop into the next condo. That's a fun sitcom. Yeah. And then, you know, you you guys get in a fight. You want a little bit of space. You pop back over to your carpeted condo. You're good to go. I just remember that show was very much, it was very obvious um, that she was the bigger star. And he was just like completely like frustrated and cucked by that and was just like always like so angry. He's so cut. So, because she talks about this part in the book of like one of the fights they had where like he wants her to be this like traditional Cincinnati wife where she's like cooking and doing laundry. It's so funny in the show, just like she's so messy boots. It's like she is 20 and she's just like their room is like disgusting. She's just like filled with cups and clothes and like, (laughs) and then she goes and then she's just like, Oh, I'll cook for you. And she's shopping, but getting home at 10. They're also having the most classic couple fight that I feel like I've been in so many times about movies where you're like, oh, we don't have enough time to eat. Should we just go to the movie or should we skip the movie and like have dinner? Because like the movie is in 30 minutes. Mm, yeah. Ugh, remember movies. Well, remember movies. Anyway, but she, he's like, she goes on a huge tour to Planet Hollywood and all these things. And like he decorates their house. And then she comes home and she's mad at him because, like, he didn't consult her in the decorating. And he is just like, how dare you? I've been busting my ass for three days just, like, hanging ugly mirrors. And she's like, well, I was, like, actually, like, on, like, a full five-city, like, tour autographs. And he's like, I'm doing the same stuff you are. And she goes, baby, no, you're not. (laughs) And they're out there on, like, their big veranda and he's cracking his Miller Lite and whew. I mean, okay. Have you ever been that person in the relationship who's just like... Which one? The one working? I mean, I'm definitely the one. I'm the Nick Lachey now working <laughs> No, less. but like, I feel like you maybe do relate to the Lachey a little bit. Because just like your girlfriend's working and then you're yeah. like, uh, 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 hello, I actually spent all day no. looking at lamps and I actually <laughs> yes. picked a lamp. And that was actually a lot of work. And I had to like, like measure it and like see how it would look and like look at the colors in the room and like, where were you? And you were not helping with that decision at all. No, and that she's is, just like, I'm sorry, I have a literal actual job and yeah. a salary. <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. So I am just, and she's like, baby, she's like, I wanted to, I wanted to hire an interior designer. I can't design, right? And I love that she admits that. I mean, no, yeah, it's like looking for a lamp is hard. And like this summer, when I was looking for a lamp for me and my girlfriend, she just kept on saying, "Buy a lamp," and I was just like, "It's literally so hard. That's a full time job." One hundred percent. Most lamps are disgusting. To but, find a cute lamp in your price range. Listen, as you, I just bought a floor lamp. It was torture. <laughs> it has taken me years. It's kind of funny. After I had this whole trauma with lamps, lamps just started coming to me. Mm. Well, you, you mean ads for lamps? No, garage sales, flea markets. I mean, you know, it, when it rains, it pours. Yes, when it rains, lamps, it pours lamps. But I, I do think there's two things here. There's one. There's being the spouse who is just like. You know, completely unreasonable and unsupportive of your spouse's career. Yeah. Okay. We all we all remember. I, I once dated someone um, who, when I would go on work trips because I had a very high powered career in politics, he would just be like, "Why are you going? Why are you going to New Mexico?" And I'd just be like, "Well, it's literally my job. I'm sorry. Like, I have a job." And right. he just like he was being the lisha, like he was storming be- around in his huge cargoes. Right. And it's like you know that that I think is like unsupportive and that is angry. However, I do think that. Interior design is very stressful. It is extremely traumatizing. And that and that the person who's not doing the design should at least acknowledge the trauma that has transpired. Celebrity Book Club. I I want to talk about her writing style for a second and and just dig into the absolutely obscene level of detail that she provides, mostly about venues and the history of the various venues that she's at. I have here pulled up. Um, her describing a ship. Oh, okay, yeah. This will be a little bit of an example. Um, 
she so she went on a bunch of, you know, USO tours because she's like, of course, obsessed with like the troops on that tour. We had to land on the USSS Theodore Roosevelt, a nuclear powered aircraft carrier. Now, I'm not one of those cool girls who goes on roller coasters and throws up her hands. I scrunch my eyes tight, white knuckling whatever or whoever I can hold on to. You think an aircraft carrier just parks, but they are always moving. And then it's like, blah, blah, blah. The Roosevelt had been deployed in the North Arabian Sea since early October and had a crew about 5,500 people. It's like... The crew size? And this goes, I mean, it goes on and on. And I feel like in other parts of the book, she's like describing planes. Well, the, literally one one day later, she's like, I was chilly, even in my gray Arthur Ashe Kids Day hoodie sweatshirt and the USS Detroit ball cap <laughs> a sailor had given me. It's like... Well, the reason why I think she goes... She does all this explaining is because her whole reputation is just being like stupid and chicken of the sea. And so she like she thinks being smart means including like details being, about the hat you wore and the veteran that gave it to you. And just like explaining at the what, La Quinta Bar and Grill on February 7th before she performed at the Rose Bowl. And there's this other part where she performs at the US Open and for like the Arthur Ashe Foundation and connection, she thinks Agassiz is Arthur Ashe. And then, and she's like looking at him and she's like, thank you so much. Oh, and Arthur Ashe is like dead. Dead of yeah. AIDS. And like, <laughs> and Agassiz is just like looking at her, just being like, what are you talking about? And then she does a full page being like, Arthur Ashe was born in 1945. You know, so she has to, you know, beat her reputation and be like, yeah, I know facts. Right. Which is I know just when like, ships were made. Let me Wikipedia this. I feel like we should move on to John Mayer and just like how completely insane that relationship oh, okay. was. I just, I just, I just yeah. found one, just one other oh, place. Please, setting. yeah. I'm sorry. I went to Nairobi National Park, a 45 square mile nature preserve just outside the main part of the city. I walked in through the main entrance and I had the feeling of being on a spacewalk as I got farther and farther from the safety of the car. It's just like we needed to know that you went through the main entrance of this park reserve. I would... I want I want a class to be taught in the way, you know, that she writes. Yeah. And it's like, you know, when she was writing, like she was like, this is the stuff people love. Yeah. You know, I got on the left side of an Escalade and the windows were tinted. <laughs> well, this is this comes back to the cover being in black and white where she's like, I'm actually being really vulnerable because I'm letting you know that I got in on the left side of the Escalade. <laughs> and that's like, my truth. <laughs> she's like, I will tell you that I wrote like scintillating, sexy emails to Johnny Knoxville, but I will also tell you that I'm like, I wrote them on my new iMac book <laughs> that I bought at the Apple store. <laughs> in, in La Jolla. <laughs> yeah. Okay. John Mayer, we have to get into it. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I Even before this book, I hated John Mayer. You hate you hate John Mayer like I hate Paul Rudd. You know what I mean? See, no, exactly. Like I think his voice is disgusting. I think his persona is disgusting. He, if he, his, like, how people, I can't even speak. His, him in a heathered mm. blue v-neck. It sings like your body is a wonderland. Your body is it's a, a wonderland. wonderland. It's like to think of that as sexy, just like this heather faced, heather voiced. Well, first of all, he's like six four. So I don't know if you've heard of height, <laughs> yeah, but no people are into it. Sorry, some people like raw badasses who are probably five ten, like Johnny Knoxville, who wear western shirts and dickies he is and do so pranks. Probably five ten, but maybe he's six one. Um, he kind of has like an Obama. Stature. Stature. I just hate him. his singing voice. And people are always like, he's the greatest guitar player of our generation. And I'm like, well, who gives a fuck? Because he makes the most magic one of 6.7, like soft rock. Fuck him and his absolute bullshit. I, I just hate this. And okay. he has all these albums and people are like, oh, no, you got to listen to the actually track seven. You have the live album, like acting like he's, you know. Who's telling you to listen to the live album? Well, he now plays with Grateful Dead, so okay. he's taken on that live album stature. You, um, you're very upset, and I see that. And, and I'll <laughs> calm down for a second. And I, it's, if you like him, that's cool, okay? Do what you need to do. I mean, I, you know, I listened to John Mayer in, in high school. I'm not such a mayor head anymore. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do know what you mean about the voice because it's very overly sensitive. <sighs> 
And it's it's breathy, you know. It's kind of, are you a male Macy Gray? What's happening here? <laughs> well, I love Macy Gray. Don't come... But the thing is, like, he just is... Cla- I think, like, what you need to understand about John Mayer is that he is just straight culture in like the most deep normal way where it's like I think I understand that love a guy who plays guitar period and not plays guitar but a guy who picks up a guitar at a party and which that's what he is you know a guy who brings out an acoustic at a party and it's just like let me just like jam a little bit like do some like steel fingered (laughs) you know campfire stuff and that's like what makes girls weaker than ease well his whole persona is I'm which is you know I think can I say something also as a pianist piano does not do the same thing you can't really pick up well, you can pick up your piano, but then you're like at this like cabaret party on 52nd Street and everyone's like, Stephen's playing. Let's gather around and sing. Yeah, it's just a little bit more Oscar Wilde. And yeah, no, I wouldn't it's say that. It's not like, as erotic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not like all these girls just being like, fuck, he can play piano. Yeah, and even Unless, guys who are like, oh, it's cool, you can play piano. They're not just like dripping. You know? Unless it's kind of in this like sexy random rom-com way where it's like a crowd of people and you're like a super silent genius pianist and you're like da da and everyone's like where's that where's that sound coming from and I'm but like what piano and I'm like, song Roger? is getting Roger? <laughs> <laughs> like the thing is that when you play songs on a piano like they just sound so like it's either sound so ragtime or like yeah. musical or like Gershwin, but it's like it doesn't sound like raw. No, and even I who plays guitar and like when you, mediocrely when you do, yeah I have a little bit, I like never was in a band and just like have stage fright. So like, I can't really like be like gather around. I'm going to play for Nirvana or whatever. And you're all going to be impressed because then I'm just going to be like so nervous. Well, but you can't just like play a cover when you're going to impress people. You have to like improvise in a way that feels cool. And it's like improvising the piano. You just sound like you're the most like weird, like autumnal, like wearing the most big velvet cape <laughs> yeah, yeah. woman. And like the album is called like Seasons of Autumn. And it's just like. No, it's that no one's like, oh, fuck, I'm so horny for Diana Krall. Or yeah. just like, <laughs> but to John and Jessica, it's like, right, she is, you know, here is this, you know, guy who is sensitive. Right. Supposedly. Well, I mean, the thing is, like, when you're a sorority girl and you only know jocks, it's like, you're like, oh, here is this guy who's, yes, like, right. not a He's... football player and plays an instrument and so has this, like, you know, sheen of artistry or intellectualism or something that's not just, like, I am a meathead football player. And it's like, all the guy. it's like, Nick is just very, like, you know, a dumb boy band guy. And so it's just, like, she meets this one person who can string a sentence together and she's like, this comes back to the, like, oh, I had a conversation with Johnny Oxford for two hours at a right. bar where she's just, like, She's just so, like, floored. And, like, when she talks about their relationship, which is insane and very on and off, and he's, like, constantly gaslighting her and breaking up with her and then getting back together over email. He really email. invented what gaslighting is. Yeah. I, well, is it, okay, is it gaslighting? I'm always like, or what is, is it, gaslighting? <laughs> yeah, now, because now you said that and I'm putting it in the secular pile where I'm like, what does that mean? I'm like, I feel like it wasn't even gaslighting. He was just being a dick where he would just dump her and then get back together with her. Mm. Okay, well, this is just crazy. Maybe the craziest part to me about their, like, on and off is once they broke up, she finds out for, like, months and months he had been going over to her parents' house and, like, playing guitar for them in the backyard. And just, yeah. like, so do, like, that's so actually, like, American Psycho and, like, full serial killer, just, like, where you're so charming and just, like, can get anyone wrapped around. Well, he actually famously collects watches. And GQ is always, like... John Mayer has collected another fucking dope watch. Well, I'm sorry. Can we? When in history did men and watches become associated? And also, oh, that's not cool. You collect watches. That just means you're rich. Fuck yeah. <laughs> so, yeah I, I'm being Take I'm this super down. punk today. Just like it's like yeah. If you collect sneakers, at least there's some like style. That's also an expensive hobby. But you're like, I'm not saying like, sneakers. <laughs> okay, that didn't really prove your point. Sneakers. Watches like, is just a little more like. Okay, so a, a vintage Rolex. Congrats. I'm sure it's well, cute. Well, I mean, yeah, that can be cost a lot. <laughs> but that can be like 10 grand. That's a lot more than sneakers. But no, I just... Watches, like, I don't know why... Some At some point in history, someone said, oh... I'm wearing a vintage watch right you're, right A, now, you're wearing a vintage it. watch and you're obsessed with pocket watches. I don't know what you're talking about. You would have a watch collection no, if you had I'm the money. No, I'm jealous. I'm jealous. In high school, I loved pocket watches. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Then I got One into at a like time. more retro 80s watches, less like, you know, it's 1893. What time is it? Click. 
But anyway, so John Mayer and Jessica Simpson <laughs> have this tumultuous relationship where it's always in secret. See, this is the thing where I don't know if he's gastly. I think he's just a dick where it's like he's kind of embarrassed by her because she's known to be like stupid. So he kind of he's keeps being it a secret. The, he's being the me and he thinks like she's such a pop star and he's this like cool yeah. intellectual guitar player. So he's like, oh, but fucking her. Right. He calls her sexual napalm yeah. in the famous Playboy interview. And he says, like, I would live on the street if no, it got to me and I you, could fuck her every day. Okay, well, there's, he says oh. if you, <laughs> he says if you, um, if you told me I'd have to pay ten thousand dollars to fuck her oh. every time, I would just start selling all my shit. All of his fucking vintage Rolexes. <laughs> Out the door. Fuck I love that yeah. you're slowly revealing that your issue with John Mayer is that you actually just like have a lot in common with him. I just, I just and you're like, no, I'm Indian. I like watches. <laughs> fuck you. I impress the parents. <laughs> well, okay, but I wouldn't like, okay, I wouldn't go secretly hang out like with my girlfriend's parents if we broke up and like hang out with if them for six months. If they invited you to dinner, yes, you would. <laughs> You'd be like, oh, oysters? <laughs> what time? <laughs> Okay. Yeah, if they were like, oh, wait, yeah, we're actually just checking out this like cool Burmese oyster pop up. Yeah, sure. I don't know. <laughs> would you do that? Would you like court? No, I wouldn't court, but I do think there there becomes that thing where it's like you still have the ex's mom in your phone and then totally. they text you and you're just like, oh, like, Merry Christmas, Christine. I hope right, you're doing yeah. well. I guess it's super awkward. But yeah, to go over to their house and like play, play them tunes around a fire like in Calabasas, well, like that's random. since you are such a piano man. And I feel like being a piano man is more of a parent horniness thing. I could yes. really see you going over and just being like, hey, Christine, what do you want to hear? Elvis Costello? Um, Joni Mitchell? Hell, let's let's do Billy Joel. It's like, actually crazy how moms are the only ones who are horny for my piano. Right. So, <laughs> and you're there and like this Christine woman is like telling her son a year later, just being like, oh, um. Steven has been playing piano at the home now for a year. <laughs> like, that's creepy of her. Again, like, her parents are creepy. And just like any stage parents are creepy. They're like, oh, yeah, sorry. We just forgot to tell you that John Mayer came over every but night. But it's way creepier of John because it's like, so you just want to go over and for press sure. this, this, like, closeted pastor. <laughs> And the wife, and you want to just, like, weirdly continue to insinuate yourself in Jessica's life after you keep, like, dumping her and, like, not acknowledging your relationship publicly and then, like, writing some long email being, And then like, it's finally triumphant is, like, she realizes he breaks up with her just to have song material. Well, she breaks up with him when the sexual napalm interview comes out. And I have to say, I'm like, out of everything that he did, to me, that's, like... Does that make you epic? I was like, that's a huge compliment. I was like, that's, like, the... Everything else you did do was awful. Like, that is kind of great. I would love for someone to call me sexual napalm in an interview. Oh my God. I thought they broke up when, like, he, she's going to see Ashley Simpson in London and, like, he's waiting outside of her hotel. It just comes to a point where she's just like... Well, you know I met John Mayer once at Neiman Marcus in Boston. <laughs> oh, my God. I forgot. And he was, like, probably buying, like, a... N I remember this article with him about how he would buy, like, 30 dark gray American apparel v-necks at a time. Huh. I mean, sure. I mean, it was probably a good idea because I went out of business. Exactly. Like, stock up. So take us to Neiman Marcus, I'm downtown at, Boston. I'm at Neiman's. I don't know if I was like shopping there, if I was like, oh, with I'm, mother with. No, I was I was with a friend from high school, a good friend, a good friend from high school who was not you. And who do I see hulking among the racks? But John Mayer. And wow. there's a couple of girls going up to him. And my friend is like, oh, my God, that's John Mayer. And I'm like, oh, my God, that's John Mayer. And he's what? in a hoodie and he is oh, huge. Oh, right. He and really he's got the shaggy hair, the sort of beach skater hair. Mm, he has DSLs. Full DSLs. Absolutely massive. Lips. I forgot he also was like at the height of thin, right, V-neck, thin hoodie. Maybe under a blazer sometimes, but mostly just kind of that super thin. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was 2004. Amara pair. Hoodie. And... You know, you can tell he's packing, right? He's just a large man with large features. It's got to be big. And I go up with my friend and I was like so stammery and just like, oh, hi, I'm a fan. And then I made this like really weird 
I guess it wasn't a joke, but I was trying to connect with him. And I was like, oh, I saw an acapella group do a performance of Your Body is a Wonderland recently. <laughs> okay, like when I meet celebrities, which is, you know, obviously rare when you meet a celeb, like I'm just fully starstruck. Like I, I fall to silence. I mute, like lock my lips. Mm-hmm. And you do come up with like super random one-liners because <laughs> when we met SJP at the Nantucket AIDS Gala, I was just like, ah. Uh, and you asked her if she gets to keep her clothes from Sex and the City and if they're in storage or like what was her storage? Right. And then she was like, oh, I archive them. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm so E! News. <laughs> right. You're, you're Ross Matthews. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, John. Hey, hey John. So, uh, yeah, I hear um, from well, the, the press junket. Do you want to know what he said in response to the acapella comment? Because it was very him. He goes, huh, it still won't get them laid, though. Oh, he was like <laughs> nasty. Yeah, he just was like, like fucking... geez, this like high school acapella troupe is like D list losers. I mean, honestly, T. Yeah, acapella <laughs> groups, you don't get laid. It's like the most D list thing. That's correct. Until you get to like, like l- listen, you're one of those Ivy acapella groups that do like really well and you become like a different league of like horny, nerdy person. Uh, I will say that the acapella comment that he made, like, I didn't quite get it at first, but I, I felt like. I, 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 I knew that I had to be kind of like, I don't know, ashamed or cowed in some way. I was like, yeah. oh, okay. Like, oh. I guess like, I'm a loser. I'm like, a loser. I'm like, gonna, I'm a virgin. I'm a virgin somehow. It's like, and I was a virgin. So again, that was accurate. Um, but I do remember being like, okay, this person is tall, but wearing normal clothes. And that's interesting. I do think that celebrities in general, they're never the height that you think they are. And they're always in more normal clothes. And when Jessica Simpson at Disney World, she gets mistaken for Britney Spears. Do you remember that part? Or was she just being like, I was wearing a Ralph Lauren large bow, short <laughs> yeah, crop, yeah. white tank, <laughs> and <laughs> jeans from Levi's. This is so sad. <laughs> she goes, I was wearing my Mickey ears and my vintage Mickey Mouse Club shirt that I got when I auditioned. And it's like she never made it to Mickey Mouse. And this woman comes up to her and is like, Britney Spears. And she already like had the selfie ready and takes a pic. And then the woman runs into her the next day at the pool and is like, I am so sorry. You are Jessica Simpson. And last night, my husband and I prayed that we would see you again. And again, it's like everyone's so Christian. Kind of like how in the L word, everyone's lesbian. Yes. This, everyone's Christian. I guess a lot of people are Christian in this world. But she's like, this woman just at, obviously, at Disneyland just being like, and I prayed all night long that I would run into you and get to, like, fix my mistake. Wow. Well, I mean, it's like, fine, you fix the mistake, but that's still fucking hurt like a dagger. No, and so that all I would on it. I would be, so, I would be oh, mortified. If you were at Disneyland with your family. With your family. And somebody, like... If if somebody Someone mistook can... me for another just like gay brunette comedian. gay comedian, I would actually jump off a bridge. No, you would be like just talking to yourself on a roller coaster. You would just be like, and then we'd be at like the pretzel like hacienda factory later, and you're just like again just like shoving pretzels in your mouth, just being like, I was like, what's wrong with Steven? But anyway, all these pains, I mean, they just add up to Jessica failing. Yeah. That thing. And at one point, this, okay, this trip I felt was so us. So she wants to, she's already had her kids and her and her husband are like drinking so much, but they're like super happy. Um, And she goes on this trip and she wants to get a surgery to get her, um, what do you call it? Stretch marks removed. And her doctor calls her and talks to her assistant. It's like, I need to talk to her assistant. It's like, it's her 35th. Like, Jessica's talking to anyone, tequila shots. And he's like, no, literally, I need to talk to her. <laughs> and he calls her and he's like, so your liver levels are pretty high, like very big Ange style. He's like, you're going to die. And she's like, well, not tonight. Like, tequila. <laughs> But I mean, you can't, once, you know. Oh, no, that's what I'm saying. Like, I super relate to that. If you told me I couldn't have to stop drinking my 35th, I would do it. Yeah, you were like, honey, the ship has already left the port. (laughs) The girl yacht is already on the water. The non-binary yacht 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 has left the harbor. The (laughs) yacht. The yacht is in the water. We are drinking recess on the (laughs) yacht. Segment, segment boots. boots. How, How does she, she live? live? How does she wear? What, what does she, she eat? eat? 
Okay, okay. what does she eat? She talks about totally insane being keto. And um, she's like, well, everyone else was having fun. I was melting Velveeta cheese on a slice of turkey. Yeah, I mean, sure, eating style is disgusting. She, like, <laughs> I mean, she defines like massive of- marble count like island and that she's always doing like grilled chicken nachos on and it's like but she's getting like it's like the grilled chicken that comes like pre yes pre grilled with like sp- with lime from like whatever that like LA. it's like a Purdue sacket yeah sacket. sacket like a sack of chicken oh like a female sack <laughs> a sacket and you know now I'm sure she's more just home delivery meals yeah she's she's getting gold belly left and right <laughs> she is like gold bellying her favorite like Houston barbecue yeah. <laughs> she's like mm, tonight for Valentine's it's like I feel like it's Valentine's Day around the clock at that house. <laughs> yeah, and it's just like anniversaries, t- Valentine's. Yeah. Tonight we're doing our favorite Houston raw bar barbecue frozen sandwich. Yeah, it's like, su- it's like for six hundred dollars. Rockin' Mama Sushi, my favorite like a landlocked sushi restaurant that I'm getting delivered. covered in mayo and. Um, and I think she's ordering a lot and, like, loves Mexican food. Yeah, and, like, I mean, obviously she's also... I mean, what I do love about her is she she keeps describing her LA as she was always the host, the party host. Yeah. And so it's, like, her house People was... People gather. Was, she, she loves to gather. And, like, she's the kind of, like, TJ Maxx mom who has the sign that says a place to gather. But, like, she actually means she, it. No, she's not fucking fake about it. And I think she just has a chef, basically. I'm and sure there are chefs in and out that she doesn't even and know. And there's always, like, big trays. She's like, oh, well, there's, oh, like, wait, leftover oh, wait, yeah, chicken enchiladas right. from our last Halloween party. No, this is what her food style is. She is a big island covered in tinfoil trays. trays. Trace, yeah. It's there's always trace. lined up. That's what it's like. <laughs> it doesn't matter if it's Super Bowl Sunday or if it's just a random fucking Tuesday. It's like she is the kind of celebrity who always has tinfoil trays on the island. Well, and she refers to like how her and Eric like thought they were like Jim Morrison of like having all their friends over to their like house, just being like, Yeah, I would like oh, it, was the bling- 60s. it was the 60s. We're all hanging out. Eric thought he Gertrude was Jim Morrison. And it's like, okay, Jessica, no, but like you having like tons of catering trays of like no, I know. enchiladas like, and sushi is not you being Jim, Jim Morrison. Morrison. <laughs> and just like drinking vodka out of your live left love, love <laughs> yeah, tumbler. Yeah. Um shake, 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 ice. Um, but I ha- do I do respect that and I do think it's super generous to have the trays and to have people and to just be like help yourself. Well, she's I think made peace also, you know, to an extent with her body because there's one point where she says her daughter is like mom like Crystal Nathan's mom says I but bread is bad and I can't have it and she's like no like you are going to have gluten mm-hmm. like I, I'm, I'm not, not going to have a five year old who has like, a fear of gluten no? let's, let's not start that trauma now absolutely let's not let's at least wait until Madison Avenue drills it into their head when she's 18 <laughs> um, how does she live the most okay these chairs that she had newlyweds. Like, yes, she has all new stuff, and that was years ago, but I'm sure she has. It was massive, massive, massive dining room table, microfiber, I banquet think, chairs. So I think it's actually, I know that, she, I think it's suede. Is what you're talking about. Yeah. It's a suede, but it's exactly what I was thinking. It's got the studs on it. Oh. The studs all around. No, I think Shaking, that her, shaking I, my boots. I picture her furniture is like bigger than any furniture that like <laughs> yeah. anyone has ever seen. It's huge. like you walk in and it's Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Yeah. It's just like. The hugest cabinets, the hugest entertainment centers, the, the biggest TV, yeah. the hutches. No, it's a 100 high, inch TV. The game California is always King. on. Highest beds, big, like, kind of trying to be like, oh, I'm these, like, quote unquote, like, girly princess lamps. There's an indoor grill. There's an outdoor grill. Yeah, the There's outdoor a full kitchen. Outdoor kitchen. Insane. There's a full kitchen in the, like, basement rumpus room. There's a full kitchen in the, like, upstairs in the, den, in the bonus room. Where they have, like, a little sink. Ton- There's Keurig's everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's a Keurig in, like, every bathroom. Right, like, the Keurig man comes to the house and they're like, got another load for ya! <laughs> She's getting a dump truck full of pods every week. Fresh pods, fresh flowers. Um, her and her husband keep a trash bin of oyster shells by their bed because it's an aphrodisiac. So that like is u- just... Like, used oyster? Like- but they must be, like, dried, you know, in, like, such a Cape Cod. Oh, I see. Because at first I was like, ew, fucking wet ass. I know, it's so wet. No, you're right. Like, a dry, like a shell that a girl has on, like, you in an Urban Outfitters catalog uh, yes, on the like bedside lamp, table. Yes, like succulent with, yeah, right, right. chair. But it's like, how? Shell, 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 shell. The trash can. I'm really curious about this trash can. And I mean, huh. I think as we basically learned, like, 
Jessica is like really good in bed. It's like, yeah, what? she fucks. fucks. <laughs> there's one thing about Jessica, she fucks. And maybe there's something to be said for being a virgin for a while. Yeah, because she's like, she realized it's all about the emotion and then she went full force. Okay, wait. Incoming theory. <laughs> <laughs> um, super Christian girls who wait to have sex till they're married are, are the craziest in bed. Okay, well, yes, well, I was going to say they're kind of the, the repression, the gay men of the straight world because gay men also like wait to have sex because they like don't meet other gay oh. guys in high school. So it's like, I didn't lose well, my but virginity. But also same with like lesbians. Okay, like, well, I also not... didn't have sex like until college. Okay, like, but not really talking about lesbians. You're like, um, and again, like, sorry, they don't count. So just, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> yeah, no. like, uh, <laughs> sorry, girls and gays, girls and gays. Girls and gays, <laughs> girls and gays, girls and gays. And it's like that waiting keeps it all pent up. And then once you start fucking, you don't stop. Totally. But I also think the Christianity and the repression, it's so bad because it's like so good. Well, yeah, that's the thing, though. It's like I feel like Christianity, even more so than homosexuality, is like something that you never really get to rub out. It's so in there. Because then you're gay and all of a sudden it's like, okay, you've been gay for a while. Yeah. We've forgotten about You forgot about like being closeted and how traumatizing it was, whatever, move on. But it's like Christianity gets Oh, it's with you. Yeah. Um, I mean, my mother, Catholic. You know, she's she's never going to scrub that off. No, no, no. So that's what I'm saying. And Jessica, but also in the Jessica, once you're Christian, that's the thing. She's like, it is my duty to fuck the shit out of my husband. I will fuck my husband. God is watching it and God approves. And he's sitting on a massive, massive sexual couch from yeah. Wayfair approving of me fucking my <laughs> no, husband so with oyster shells. Where it's just like, okay, so now every time you have sex, it's just like, and this is a beautiful union in the eyes of God. It's like every time you penetrate, it's well, a union. I don't think every time. I feel with like her and, kind of in her mind, she well, I is think like every time. Eric is very tantric. Yeah. There are no quickies in the Simpson household. I can see her actually. She's like being the man and she's like, Eric, like come fuck me on top of like our massive washing machine laundry room. <laughs> Hutch den. And there's, of course, a 65 inch TV in the laundry room. No, and there's like so, there's like such a like a folding station, station that's actually banquet. like a full island. <laughs> <laughs> like, Snacks, a fridge, more Keurigs. <laughs> um, okay, what does she wear? What does she wear? I mean, as I was saying earlier, she's like, she says her favorite style is huge hoodie, little shorts, flip flops. And obviously, her, her like Coles line is just like, very cold. <laughs> it's like it's like you know it's it's kind of southern Christian like sweater, big V neck sweater with lo- Christian lo- girl autumn. A, a, yeah, very Christian, you know, a lot of um arm skirts. Yeah, the holes. It's a huge billowing arms with arm holes. It's also like the a lot tightest, of crochet, most a lot of like denim, a lot of boots. The denim is so paint on and like lycra. Yeah, I wonder if she has introduced like a wide calf boot. I'm sure she has for women of like wider calf experience. Yeah. I would love to go to a Kohl's safely and distance <laughs> and see if I could try on some of her boots. Because I have one of my biggest insecurities is I have pretty big calves. Okay, I feel like I've heard you say in the in the past, though, that you wish your calves were bigger. No, I've never <laughs> said that. That's why I was so hesitant to get into to wear my socks high. Because I thought it made my calves look even bigger. Right. But you know that a bigger calf would make your ankle look smaller. Which is then I realized after right. wearing my socks high. And I just want to congratulate Jessica in the kind of what does she wear. Again, I think she made her deal with the Vince Vince Camuto, the brand. Oh, her like licensing Yeah, her licensing partner. deal. She was like, and a deal, like they met at Macy's and it was just like no one had ever made a licensing deal like that. Oh, because she like, she fought for her more percentage points or something? Yeah, it was, a, she's so Lori Griner. She's so Shark Tank. Yeah. She was like, Everyone else, like, I fought for, like, a crazy percentage. And that's why she's so fucking rich. Because kind of before this book, like, you like you know she has perfume and stuff, but you're like, what? And then, like, there'll be a clickbait article that will be, like, richest celebrity in the world. And it's, like, Jessica Simpson because she has a $300 billion licensing deal. She, she, she knew she what to she's do. Dumb, but she, she knew what to do. She saw she saw all those... Perfume, lip gloss. She saw all those moms. She saw those southern moms, those friendly Christian ladies, and she said, cha-ching. Cha-ching. Dillard's Let's Go. <laughs> oh, we have we have to talk about who are we in the book. Oh, my God. We always forget about this. Segment. I know. Well, I think that we know that you're John Mayer. <laughs> As we've discovered, I, I didn't think I was, but and I was going to say I'm Johnny Knoxville, but clearly I'm John Mayer. No, and that's where all your internal conflict comes from. <laughs> are you Willie Nelson? Oh, I was going to say Ashley. Oh. 
Because I love London. Right, and you're like this like sassy younger sister. I'm the sassy younger sister. We used to drive. Well, you would drive. You would scare me to death blasting the Ashley Simpson album going 100 miles an hour Mm -hmm. on the Tobin Bridge. Right. I mean, but that... Terrifying. That album was just so emotional. My autobiography. La la, you know. You make me want to la la la, in in the the kitchen kitchen, on on the the floor. floor. I'll be a French train. That had attitude. Yeah, okay. So you're Ashley. You're this crazy... And also, I think she was... Before her nose job. Oh, wait. I actually did get a nose job this year, so I'm post. You're Ashley Simpson. I'm John Mayer. Right. Done. Let's record an album. So our next book is going to be uh, by a now, I guess, uncanceled comedian, Aziz Ansari. Yeah, truly not sure of his cancel status. Um, you know, from Parks and Rec, his show Master of None. And his book is called Modern Romance. It's about singles and love. Tinder, and swiping left, swiping right. Where are we? Phones. Swiping. Okay, what happened? It's actually, I feel like it's going to be very friendly, but it's like, what happened no. to meeting someone at a bar? <laughs> <sighs> Yeah, I mean, I feel like that is not going to be that friendly with Wits because he actually is probably very pro Tinder. Yeah, because he and he's it's going to be more like Tinder strategies and him just being like, dude, you got to play the field, you got to flirt like an economist, get your duck in every row, you know? Yeah, but he's also sensitive. <laughs> well, we'll see. He doesn't strike me as like so nostalgic for like the sixties and like diners. I think he's nostalgic for diners, actually. But he's so pop up and like. He's so he, like, us def- and like finds like, he, he defines pop up and just like a Thai food place. He's gold like, belly. Doing a, he's so gold belly. He's, he's like, like, oh, I'm gold bellying everything. <laughs> he like launched three vodka collabs this week. And just like Nashville fried, like hot fried chicken and like the white sauce and the special sauce. So we're going to get into it all. Okay. All the Aziz you stuff. You know, I auditioned for Master of None. Didn't get the part. We'll grieve next week for that <laughs> one. <laughs> um, thank you so much for listening. Rate, like, subscribe. Um, and tell your friends and tell your parents and their yes, friends. Yes, and your aunts and your cousins and their cousins. Mm-hmm. And any friends who may be expecting. I'm sure, you know, I'm sure they're probably pretty stressed right now. Mm. It might be nice to listen to a fun pod. Good tip. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Best. Best. Hey, y'all. I want to tell you about the good people that made this episode happen. Celebrity Book Club is presented by Prolo Projects and HeadGum. The show is produced by my sister in God, Meg Murnane, with editorial support from my pastor, Andrew Parsons, and his pastor, Leon Nafok. Engineering by Ferris Monchi. Original theme song by my organist, Stephen Phillips Horst. Artwork by Teddy Blanks at Chips NY. Follow us on Twitter at CBC The Pod. Subscribe on your favorite podcast app. Leave us a review. And don't forget to tell your friends about us. It would mean the world to me. That was a HeadGum Podcast.